for willingness in having your, your camera on or um, being off mute, like you do you. Um, we want to make sure you don't, we don't have a recording of your face if you don't want us to, but um, we hope throughout that you um, like converse with us or unmute yourselves and ask questions live if you want to. Um, we, we want it to feel really informal and, and like it serves what you are curious about. So, um, but yeah, thank you again so much for being here. I'm Jessica Berg. I'm the director of the Minnesota Cup. And um, Eddie, do you want to introduce yourself too? Sure. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks, Jessica. My name is Eddie Olson. I'm the managing director of the on-ramp education and workforce innovation accelerator. Cool. Um, so yeah, we are here to tell you a little bit more about each of our programs because we work in almost identical spaces. Like I think maybe um, Eddie can clarify a little bit more about which audience or which stage of companies that he works with and what their programs support. But we are both working really closely with um, innovators and entrepreneurs who are, who are trying to improve education and um, sort of workforce spaces, which is so super broad. There's all different types of companies and concepts and innovations within those, those broad categories, but um, we both are working in that space. And so excited to get to present this together and be able to answer some more of your questions. Um, because maybe you want to apply to both of our programs or you learn through this um, info session that um, one or the other feels like the better fit for you right now. So um, I am going to kick off by just giving you a super, super high level overview of who Minnesota Cup serves and what our organization um, is all about. And then I'll have Eddie do the same thing and we'll kind of go from there with um, giving you more specifics, answering your questions. So throughout this time, please don't hesitate to put your questions in the chat um, and we will either come back to them or try to answer them in the moment. But this is really a time that we want all of you who are here sharing your, your screens with us to get your questions answered. So this can go in whatever direction is helpful for you. Um, but I, um, as I mentioned, I'm Jessica Berg. I run the Minnesota Cup. MinCup is a startup or new venture competition that is based at the Home Center for Entrepreneurship at the U of M. Um, we are designed or oriented towards serving early stage entrepreneurs who are based in Minnesota. So we are only, um, we're really here for um, to support and serve Minnesota based entrepreneurs um, across uh, any industry, actually, we, we are an industry agnostic competition. So um, we have an education and training division that a company applying can self-select into or can say, this is the space I'm in, this is where I want to compete. But we are truly open to any idea, any concept um, from, from founders or Minnesota-based businesses in, in the state of Minnesota. Um, the only other like constraint or um, the only other like ceiling we put on things is that if you are earning a million dollars a year in revenue or more, you are too far along or too mature of a company for our process. Um, and in large part, because we operate like a not-for-profit, we really do authentically want to direct free resources, mentorship, support opportunities, and really increase um, folks' networks and make entrepreneurship more accessible in the state. Um, and it's just our hypothesis that if you are already earning a million dollars a year in revenue, like you maybe are set or like what we are offering, you probably have figured out already. So that's um, part of our way of making sure that we're directing those resources of the people who really need them. Um, the other lovely, awesome thing that we do that maybe is something you've heard about us or part of how you hear about our alumni is that every season we give away over $400,000 in seed capital to the companies that progress through the competition. Um, you know, it's not a winner take all. It's not just one company that takes home all 400,000. Usually maybe between 15 and 20 companies take some share of that prize money, depending on how everything stacks up at the end. But um, all of that seed capital is given away um, sort of free and clear and we take no equity in exchange. Um, and that's a really big part of our mission to support and um, help people with really, really great ideas, but maybe who don't have a rich uncle or who don't have access to capital, or maybe you're too early for um, venture capital funding, but like the idea is still really solid. Um, we really want to get funding in the hands of those types of founders. So um, the seed capital is a really big part of what we offer. 
Um, but yeah, everything that we do is really to serve and support and make entrepreneurship more accessible and equitable in the state of Minnesota. And that, that looks like a lot of different things, depending on what amount of experience and exposure you have. Um, but I will pause there and turn it over to Eddie to give his high level overview. And then I, depending on how much you know or what you're curious about, I can always um, answer some more questions later too. So I'll turn it over to you, Eddie. Thanks, Jessica. As a 2014 Minnesota Cup semifinalist, I mean, it's a wonderful initiative and just a huge fan of it. So happy to be here, everyone. Um, great. I see some familiar faces. Uh, wonderful to be speaking here. Thank you for this opportunity, Jessica. So I'm the managing director of the Education and Workforce Innovation Accelerator. It's a generator accelerator. So generators focus is really also similar to the Minnesota Cup and focusing on building community, right? Working with the best and brightest. We have a few other initiatives around the nation. And uh, this one, as well as our InsurTech one is based here in Minneapolis. And we couldn't think of a better city. So I'm gonna talk about two different things today. And it's all kind of rolled up into one. So the first is the accelerator, which I'm the managing director of. I think I've mentioned that like five times. And then the other one is also the conference. And the conference sort of kicks off the whole initiative. So if you're interested in either or both, I'm gonna share a link a little bit later in the chat where you could just quickly apply. And you think of apply for a conference, what exactly does that mean? So for the conference, which kicks off on June 17th, we have what we call a startup trap. And this is for you, your startup to apply and pitch one-on-one -on -one to interested corporations or investors that are also attending this conference. I mean, it's a wide range of different investors, CVCs, but also just corporations that are interested in speaking with early stage companies. So it's really just kind of connecting the like-minded like people who are focused more so on innovation. And, you know, hopefully, and it's happened before many, many times, a real material business case can come out of that, whether it just be expanding your network, right? If you also want to find just interesting companies that are doing cool things, it's it just works in so many different ways. So if you're interested in that, I highly, highly encourage you to please apply. Uh, and we'd love to have you there. The second thing is the accelerator program. So the accelerator program uh, officially starts the next day. It's a 12 week program. So it kicks off June 18th. We're picking a smaller cohort than you may think. It's just five companies. Each five companies receives 100K investment on whatever existing terms you have, or if you're in the midst of a fundraise, or we'll also actually entertain the idea of an uncapped note for a future raise. So we do have an equity aspect to it. What exactly does that mean? It means that at least your you know, longer term aspirations or current aspirations include some sort of venture backing. Um, so that's kind of one of the things that could help filter if you're interested or not. Like I said, it's the 12 week program. It's structured in the generator model. Um, which is, it includes a lot of sort of one-on-ones with myself, you know, weekly goals, monthly goals, end of accelerator goals. Then we have different modules again of, you know, meeting with different mentors, meeting with strategic business contacts. We're really trying to focus and facilitate real material partnerships within Generator, but also outside of Generator, our mentors. And we're so fortunate to be working with ECMC as they have a lot you know, they have their own venture group too. So they're gonna consider follow on. They also are dedicating resources to work with the cohort. Um, so there's a lot of exciting things about it. So that's how it kind of starts for the first four weeks. Again, then it's more so, how can we help you be successful? What are some of the key challenges you're facing in your business? Again, it's a smaller cohort. So we can really focus on your company specific challenges and try to create a path to success. We wrap up the last month of the accelerator with investor swarm. So you're gonna be meeting with a hundred different investors from around the nation, really fine tuning your pitch, your milestones, your KPIs, and then hopefully being ready to go to market. So by background, right? I've been in VC since 2013 when I first moved to Berlin to work for an early stage VC called Point Nine Capital. Worked for a few different venture backed companies was a founding team member of Allianz Life Ventures and then spent the last few years in Germany. Love working with startups, early stage venture back companies. Um, we'd love it if you were to apply. That's awesome. That's a great overview, overview Eddie. I'm gonna 
throw in a couple of other things like you gave such a great overview and um, I'll share a little bit more about what the Minnesota Cup process looks like. So when you apply and with the hopes of being a semifinalist, what you can expect to experience. Um, but first we had a question come through related to um, if, if this, you know, either of our, our organizations are a good fit for not-for-profits. And I'll first say that Minnesota Cup is, um, I'm assuming that you're here because you're interested in the education and training division. And we do have both for-profit and not-for-profit companies apply in that space. Um, oftentimes education is really like mission and social led work, um, being able to sort of educate folks better and um, reduce disparities or all of, you know, one of the many number of sort of issues facing their education system. Like that's, it's really meaningful work. So um, you could definitely apply to our education and training division as a not-for-profit, but also we have an impact ventures division. So depending on how central your mission is to your business idea or um, what other types of like, what type of revenue model you have, um, what type of, how, how you're structured, you might also want to check out our impact ventures division um, because they have a really big range of not-for-profits, B Corps, for-profit businesses that have a double or triple bottom line, et cetera. Like that's a space that's really, our judges in that division are really familiar with and an expert in some of those spaces. So um, just want to throw that out there. If you are in like a mission-driven or a not-for-profit space that um, you could consider either one of those divisions. And how about for you, Eddie? I'm guessing that if there's venture backing that you don't often have not-for-profits go through your process, but I'll let you speak to that in case I'm, in case I'm wrong. Not just Katie, totally right. So because we are focused on a lot of the fundraising aspect and different, and hopefully bringing on, you know, follow on financing, it's not a good fit. Cool, awesome. Um, so um, just to fill in a little bit more information about what the min cut process is like and sort of what steps you would go through should you apply and, and, and move forward. Um, we have uh, online applications that are open right now and they close on Friday, April 16th. So there's still a little bit more than two weeks left to apply. So if you haven't even, you're just hearing about us for the first time, you have not looked at it or started, you have plenty of time to um, fill it out. Uh, and, and Jamie, um, the other team member who's um, part of our MinCup support is gonna throw some other links into the chat so you can check stuff out. Um, but please give it a look. Um, we do what we can to make it as low risk as possible. Um, so it is completely free. It's completely online. Um, we try to take all of like the strip as much of the, like the business jargon um, out of it as we can. So we really do want people, even if you're not very far along in your process, even if you haven't gotten a lot of traction yet, um, but you have a really big idea or you're tackling a really big challenge um, in the community or you know, however you want to think about or articulate an opportunity, if you've got a big opportunity, apply. Um, we, our judges um, weight your opportunity is 50% of the score that you receive for the application, which is what leads us to have super, super early stage companies competing or participating alongside companies that have been around for, you know, three to five years, but are growing more slowly. Um, so it is a really interesting mix of company types who make it into the semifinalist round in each division. And um, what, it, what it means to be a semifinalist, if you are selected to move forward, is that you have a few months where you are invited to participate in education sessions. You are matched with um, one to two mentors who are there specifically to support you in kind of whatever way you need. We, because we have such breadth of um, across all of our divisions, across a lot of different levels and experiences and stages. Um, we have a really, really broad mentor pool as well. We have people who have specific functional expertise like accountants, lawyers, um, finance people, um, people who are expert in supply chain and manufacturing processes, um, really any type of functional expertise you can think of. We will have somebody in our process that you could work with or get matched to if you have a really specific um, piece of information that, or, or like a business issue that you need help with and you haven't been able to hire that out or it's not your, your background. 
Um, so that's a really big part of our mentor resources is um, pairing up people who can help you avoid pitfalls or um, you like the beginning of the answer to your question and maybe point you towards some, some ways that you can prioritize your resources or your time as you move forward. Um, we also have a lot of people with deep industry expertise or who maybe were more generalists in their um, functional expertise, but that really know a particular industry or really know um, like those broad business skills. Um, maybe they have gone through, um, maybe they're a serial entrepreneur themselves. Maybe hey, I'm gonna take my mask off in here just so you guys know. Oh, thanks Peter. Um, so the, they are going to um, be available to you more to do some of the basics, like give you feedback on your business plan, give you feedback on your pitch deck. Um, and so between we hope the mentorship and the free education sessions that you can participate in that we are giving that support and sort of safety net to people who are either mature and they know these business concepts already, but they just want somebody to give them feedback and support to take it to the next level, or for people who have never made a business plan before, who are super intimidated at the idea of like, how am I going to put together a pitch deck? Um, and, and so we, uh, we do have that flexibility and that breadth to serve different types of people with different types of experience within that semifinalist round. And then we have you submit your business plan pitch deck in one minute video back to our judges. And at that point, um, we narrow down each division to a top three. Um, at which point, you know, we have a couple of other rounds. Um, you give a pitch to our judges if you make it to the finalist round. Um, you have more opportunity to get coaching around public speaking and pitch presentation, which I know is similar to what you'd experience in the generator accelerator, but um, it is a, it's interesting that it we're broad, but we do have the specific niche expertise that you need um, and really give you the opportunity to like advocate for yourself or select or communicate with us um, how you how we could best serve you and whom we can pair with you to make that happen. Um, or get you to that next stage in your growth. Um, so I'm going to pause there for a hot second and introduce Peter, who just um, joined and we're um, spotlighting. But um, Peter is the CEO of Pivot Interactives, which is the company that won the Education and Training Division in Minnesota Cup last year. And super grateful that you're able to take some time um, and share your experiences with us, Peter. Um, so I'll let you get settled and like not put you on the spot immediately. But um, after Eddie and I just both shared a little bit more info, do you, does anybody have questions based on what we've shared already? Yeah, I kind of, I, I do. Um, I'm, so I'm Lizzie who asked the nonprofit question. Um, I feel like our nonprofit is in between. So how would we, um, would I email hello Minnesota Cup? to kind of get some advice on to which place to apply or, or do we just have to make that call? Yeah, that's a great question. Yes, you can definitely email us and reach out and because it's very, you know, it's pretty personal. Like we, you know, you may want to just share a lot more information about your business or sort of how you're positioning yourself or who you're selling to that would allow us to give you some more specific advice. Um, we also have um, a bunch of application info sessions where we walk through our whole process and tell you a lot more about our Minnesota Cup applications in detail. And people have tons of questions about the division piece. Um, so we, if you wanna join one of those two or you know you're gonna apply and you just like to get some more tips about how to have a strong application, I'd sign up for one of those two. And depending on how big the group is, we could always talk about it in more detail then too. So um, we'll share some of those links with you either in the chat or um, you know, in a follow-up sort of like thank you email after this wraps up. Um, but that's a really good question. I have a question about the, the different stages. So it's open up to everybody to apply. And then the next level is the semifinal where you get a mentor, which is honestly just my goal. Is there, yeah. um, given all the years that you've done that, it looks like there are 10, 10 groups from each division that go into the semifinal round, right? Correct. Yeah. Is there a general, like, how many people apply for the first round? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, it's it's very it's a, I have a very unsatisfying answer to that question. But it's a good one. And it depends. Um, we every year we have um, in the hundreds of people apply, but from one division to the next, it varies a ton. 
which divisions get more or less applications in any given year. Um, so the, the division level is where that like where the competition lies, because when you choose one, then you're choosing the group in which you're competing for one of those 10 spots to become a semifinalist. Um, mm -hmm. but even with like, it is truly so different from one year to the next that telling you what it was like in 2020 or 2019 is not necessarily gonna be super helpful for you when you're making a decision. I would highly recommend that you just think about which one you choose based on which group of judges or which space you think is going to be the best fit for a group of humans who will understand what you're going after and sort of like what your market is, what your opportunity is. That's really the best way to stand out is to make sure that you're finding the best audience who will really get it when you're articulating your idea. Um, so that's like a high level answer, but I know like people are like, is it 10% that make it? Is it five? Like, is it 1%? And um, I would say it's in the neighborhood of more like between 10 and 20% of who, people that apply make it through, but that is super generalized and it depends a lot on the division. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question though. We get that question all the time. Um, do you have and, an answer from that, from the um, accelerator or conference standpoint, Eddie? Like, in, I know it's a newer program, you're just coming into your, your second year, but do you have um, like generally how many people are interested versus how many you take? Uh, so no real answer on that yet, again, because it is the first year, but I will mention something which is really important. So as I'm talking today about the Generator, well, Education and Workforce Innovation Accelerator, Generator, like I mentioned earlier, they have a real wide variety of different initiatives. And these initiatives can be like in Madison, in Anchorage, Alaska, for example, or with a specific company that's sponsoring it. And as I'm in the sort of what we call the flagship accelerator program, we also have programs, one, the G Alpha program, which works from the earliest of the early stage companies, the ideation stage, where you might have a really good idea, but you don't necessarily know how to move forward. And we also have what we call the G beta programs. And these are sort of the next steps. So you, you're not necessarily at the point where you can reap the most benefit from working with an accelerator like myself but you are in that point where you know, you're know you about to launch an MVP or maybe you're trying to scale up or maybe you just need a few more steps before the MVP, but you're ready to take on some funding and really try to accelerate. So I highly encourage you to also check out our website and I'll share it again in the link because there are, all, there are a lot of wonderful options, options that could really complement your experience in the Minnesota Cup or afterwards. Right. I mean, Jessica and I are here together because we care about the community and we want to really foster that innovation and growth and our initiatives really complement one another. So please take a look. I mean, you might be surprised with what you find. Um, just again, though, to kind of double down on what we're looking for education. So ed tech and workforce startups at a phase where, you know, it makes the right sense for your company where you're gonna be in that position of accelerating growth, working with the different partners that we have to try to build those business relationships. Because it'd be a shame if you applied, you got in too early, but your company is not there where you can really you know, try to go to market and lever these opportunities. So uh, it really, we just, we wanna make sure that for every company that comes into the accelerator, it's the best time for that company and for us and for ECMC. That's awesome. Thank you. I think that's, those are great questions and I appreciate the clarification. I feel like there are, like, like Eddie said, I would just echo that we're both here to sort of support in the same ways. We just have slightly different formats and methods for doing so. So it's super likely that you might eventually want to take advantage of both of our programs, but you might just um, need either one of us at different times in your, in your development. So um, we're really excited. We want you to know about everything available to you as early as possible so you can make some of those decisions. Um, I'm gonna turn it over if you're ready um, to Peter. I would um, super appreciate you sharing some of your time. And I know in past info sessions, people have really appreciated getting to talk to an alumni um, or getting to talk to somebody who's currently building a company and um, be able to frame up some of their questions and experiences through your lens rather than through 
people who are obviously going to tell you at school because we are running the programs. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time. And sure. do you mind using yourself really quick or just telling people some more about Pivot Interactives? Sure, I don't at all. I, I'm uh, Peter Bohacek, as you said, and, and uh, we applied for the first time to MinCup. Well, so let's see, we had a company that was not supposed to be a company. It was just sort of a volunteer endeavor that started to generate more interest. And uh, we decided to turn it into a company um, and applied for MinCup the first time, I guess, three years ago. And um, so the, I think the thing that I will tell you about my experience with it is, is, a, is a story that I would not have wanted to hear the first time I applied. Because the first time we applied, we didn't, we didn't make it very far and we got a lot of criticism. And not criticism like you guys are terrible, but like your idea needs work in these areas. And at the time I was like, well, that's a waste of time, like all that work and I didn't get any money. And now, you know, and, uh, and then we didn't apply the next year. But in looking back, the, the, the feedback that we got was, was right on the money. And they, they actually pinpointed what the weaknesses were in our plan. And, uh, and so now looking back at that, that first experience was really useful. So why would I not want to hear that if I was in your position? Because it took us three years, right? And you're like, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. I want to go, go, go. I want it to be work next month. Uh, so looking back now, I can really see the positive part of that first one because those were weaknesses in our plan. And those experienced uh, uh, business leaders and business creators, they really helped us identify those. So um, honestly, that was the more beneficial one than, than last year. I mean, last year it was nice. We were experiencing very rapid growth and it was, uh, you know, uh, so our plan was, was better received. But the helpful thing for our company was the first time. Well, just so people have some context or can check you out if they haven't already heard of you, tell them about what Pivot, oh, Pivot Interactives does. Sure, sure. Uh, we have a website. It's a, a subscription-based website that we uh, license to university professors and high school teachers and school districts uh, that helps teach uh, science in an interactive way using uh, interactive videos. So we record these really um, complicated to produce uh, very um, clear uh, examples of phenomena. And what's unusual about what we do is that the students can measure for themselves what's happening. So it's not an explanation or anything like that. It, uh, and they can see exactly what's happening. Like bacteria are growing really fast or bacteria are not growing or the ball is rolling or chemical reaction is occurring. Um, and our unique thing is that the students are learning from these videos. And then we built this web platform around it where teachers can create assignments and grade them and uh, give feedback to their students. And um, it was never intended as a pandemic learning tool, but it turns out um, it turns out it works extremely well when, when nobody can be in school. And so we got this just enormous influx of, of customers. So, um, you know, la a year ago, virtually every school in the world needed to buy a product like ours. And there are really like three companies that do that. So we had a huge influx. In fact, if you think of it that way, we did really terribly because we got much, much smaller than one third of all the schools in the, in, in the world. So we, we only had a tiny fraction of that. Um, still a big year. That's yes, it's been a big year and it's been it's really, it's, it's really fun. Yeah. No, cool. thank goodness. I don't know. I mean, we, what would we have done if one third of the schools in the, in the entire world had signed up for us? I'm not sure how that would have worked. This, this yeah. rapid growth was fast enough. Uh, so the, yeah, the name of the company and the website uh, is Pivot Interactives. And uh, oops, for some reason I had cap locks on, caps lock on, didn't mean to do that. Um, but right, so I can honestly tell you that as far as leading a business or growing a business, I don't have a good advice. I think honestly, I feel like we worked on this for 10 years and then a pandemic came where everybody needed what we had. So that's a great business plan, do that. But short of that, short of that, I think that, that this was a great experience for us because we knew we didn't know, but we didn't know what we didn't know. And so being part of this was surrounding yourself with people who have been in this and done it uh, is I just think it, I'm so glad we did. I think that really helped us. Awesome. Um, and tell them a little bit too, Peter, about your background. Like, I mean, you're a great case study on one that we love to have people come back and participate more than one year. Cause we do think that you could take something different out of our process in one season of your business, like your growth that, um, you maybe need something totally different for a year or two later. Um, so, but tell them a so, little bit about 
you, what you did before and how you ended up building a company. Right. Okay. So I'm a teacher that, uh, that's been, uh, and I actually was in engineering before that. And, uh, but my second career was, uh, as a high school physics teacher. And, uh, I built the initials of these for my own students and got funding from national science foundation, along with, uh, who is now my business partner, but who's a physics professor at University of Wisconsin River Falls. His name is Matt Matt Bonk, and we got funding where we were able to test this, like rigorously test. And what we found was that students were learning really dramatically some things that are notoriously difficult to teach. We could see that students were learning using our technique, our te uh, method, much better than they were with others. And so we. Um, we reluctantly said, well, how, how can we scale this? How can we grow it? And it was not a get rich quick scheme. It was like, oh, maybe this is the best way for us to turn this effort to scale it. Um, the best way to scale it is to make it a, a company where we sell access to it and we use that to grow the, grow the company. So we're a specific, ben a specific benefit corporation. So we have a social mission in addition to being a for-profit company. Uh, right, so then we, the other key thing that we did, I, I don't know, this is maybe not relevant to a lot of people, but National Science Foundation has grant programs specifically for people who have technology that they're questioning whether it is uh, commercially viable. And they have called the, the I-Core grant program. And that was really useful for us too, because they really encourage you to take a, a scientific approach to uh, determining whether your idea has really got uh, commercial potential. Uh, so, and I'm sure there are a lot of other programs like that, but that was really useful, like a rigorous look at like, why do you think that this is a good idea? Like, is it just because you think so, right? You need more evidence than that before you want to launch a company. Yeah, for sure. Is that, is that That's sort of what you were thinking? Is that yeah, that, no, okay. I just think it's lovely. I know like it is very common or some, I, sometimes I think that people have the misconception that folks building companies or like startup culture is focused around people who are um, right out of college, like in their 20s, right. coping right. and wearing a hoodie. And that is not yeah. actually very representative <laughs> of the people who are building cool stuff. Um, it is very often a second or third career for people. Um, more often than not, people come into this idea of building a company or um, building a business because they just they, there's this problem that they want to solve or that was it's exactly right that they want to reach more people, um, whether that's with the goal of earning money from that cool thing or from um, with the goal of, of helping people or solving a problem or often both. So mm -hmm. I just think exactly. it's important for people to hear that um, because you typify a lot of what we see um, in Men Cup. And maybe Eddie, you can share a little bit more about this or like what you notice because you recruit differently. Um, you are looking for companies that are not necessarily Minnesota based, but then that can create some other cool networks and platforms for people who go through your programs. Um, but just a quick tidbit, in 2019, the youngest Minnesota Cup semifinalist competing was 11, and the oldest one was 81. So um, tons of range in age coming from all over the state. Um, and so, yeah, we, I, the more I can tell people that it's never too late or too early to start pursuing something that you think is a good idea, like, I hope you internalize that. Um, Cause sometimes people say, I'm not ready yet. Or like, I'm going to wait until this is perfect to put it forth or to like get support and feedback. And I would say, don't wait. Um, Cause you can really yeah. benefit from that early support and exposure. So Jessica, we're seeing the same thing, right? I mean, entrepreneurs from all over the United States, outside of the United States, different ages, backgrounds, beliefs. It's really amazing. Um, and it just goes to show that, you know, if somebody really puts forth the effort and are able to just, I don't know, the best way to say is just follow the dream, I guess. And I mean, it's fantastic. And we see a lot of it because we're also dealing with a lot of earlier stage companies. And one of the things learned early on and things that, you know, I think help companies, especially in the early stage is just seeking that market validation, right? Like really doing your research, having the idea, having the dream, being willing to pivot in order to make this business successful while, a st while still being able to achieve your personal and business goals. And a lot of that comes from, you know, talking with others, right? mentors, other people within different industries, it's, et cetera, willing to offer advice and help. Um, 
it's imperative at the earlier stages of a business. Awesome. Well, I am going to like pivot the screen around just a little bit and add um, Janie Bartlett who works with me to who's been doing a, a bang up job sort of answering questions and routing things in the chat. But I do wanna shift it over to um, all of you to be able to ask your questions um, and, and whether that looks like raising your, your hand and we'll you know, turn it into the grid format um, so we can see you and you can unmute and ask your question live or if it's just Jamie helping walk us through the questions that are showing up in the chat and, and verbally asking them to, to Eddie and Peter and myself, um, that is all awesome. So I'm gonna take our spotlights away and put it back in the grid. Yeah, and I th think Peter was going to get to the question there, and then I know he needs to get back to work, so we can. For sure. Yeah. So I, yeah, Peter, anything you want to answer first? Well, I could just address the question about how much did we highlight the fact that we're a social benefit corporation, and the answer is not very much. Uh, that, it, that's something that I, I honestly feel like we sort of did that for us. We wanted to be able to know, keep that in the forefront, uh, and also, uh, but no, we didn't. We didn't point it out. We did point out that we think that our company is 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 has a positive um, a product that actually improves people's lives. But that's true for a lot of products. But we didn't. I don't think we even mentioned it in our uh, other than maybe very briefly in our application. Cool. Does, while we still have Peter, does anybody else have questions they'd like to ask him specifically? Um, Looks like uh, there's. What about your employees, Peter? I know you all grew tremendously in the past year. So yeah. what did so you start we, out with um, we, and where are you now? <laughs> well, we started off with Matt and I and neither one of us were working at it full time. We were both continuing to teach. And then we hired two full-time developers um, about a year ago, a year and a half ago. And Matt and I slowly migrated over to more of our time. But if you include the contractors that we have now, we're at about 35 uh, people that are uh, on the team in various capacities. Uh, and and we were and a year ago we were at five. So that's all, all since the since the pandemic. Yeah. Lynn, that I don't know if that's applause for Peter, or if that's you raising your hand with the question. So I apologize, my inability to interpret the. And that was an applause for how Peter's company has grown. That's amazing. Thank. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Just didn't want to ignore you. Um, so any other questions for Peter? before and then we can like release him back to his his busy life Get back to the um, lab yep yep i'm always happy to answer questions i think i really think that the min cup is is it was worth it twice uh and i you know and it was, comes in your inbox you're like ah, i gotta do that thing again but i i'm really glad that we that we persevered and uh jessica and jamie are super supportive and the people that you'll team with I'm sure Eddie is too, but I've never met Eddie before, but the people that you work with too, it's a very, very good, uh, uh, helpful community and, and you'll both benefit from it and contribute to it. So uh, I, I think that's a really positive aspect of the process too. Uh, another question on there, and, and I actually put my email in, you're happy, I'm absolutely happy to answer any questions, but I don't wanna take everyone's time, but we do, we do earth science, life science, biology uh, and physics. So we're, we're uh, cover the sort of the major topics. And that's one of the things that's turned out to be very scalable. We started off with physics, but then this technology and this learning approach scaled to other subjects and other grades. Yeah, I uh, will put my email in there. And if anybody has any questions, you are welcome to reach out. I'm happy to, to talk. I wouldn't Thank listen to anything so much, I say though. I so appreciate your time. Oh, I'm very glad to. Nice to meet you, Peter. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Thanks. And then I saw there was a question from Lucy up here, which is a, it's a good one too, um, related to the Min Cup, because some people think you need to be registered as a business with the state in order to compete, and you do not. Um, so um, for any of our divisions, you can apply with just your idea and not be already a licensed company in some form or fashion. And then regarding our youth division, so that's sort of our under 18 division, um, same thing. So they're gonna be just submitting their idea. Um, if they do want to go ahead and register, they're gonna go through the same process that any other company would through the state of Minnesota, if they're competing in the Minnesota Cup or wherever they are. Hopefully that answers that. Yeah, but from like a 
what likelihood do you personally have to make it into the semifinal round? Um, that's really hard to answer. And, and we just straight up don't know because we never know every year exactly who's going to apply. Um, but typically among Min Cup semifinalists, 50% of those semifinalists are generating revenue with their business. 50% are not. Um, and maybe a th maybe two thirds of businesses are registered entities. So they have incorporated or they have registered their business with the Secretary of State's office and a third of them are not. So it's it's truly like the pre-structure. Um, so a lot of times people even go through our process because they don't know, like, should I be a B Corp or an LLC or a C Corp? And um, they're just, they, they like, like Peter said, they didn't know, they don't know what they don't know. And they like throw their hat in the ring to potentially get support or education from our mentors and and all that other stuff. So um, again, it's really hard to say um, what your personal chances are. I just have no way, no way of like telling you that with much certainty, but um, we really do like the variety of types and maturity of companies that make it to the semifinals is super broad. So um, it's not um, more likely than not, you would compete a couple times before you would take home, you know, the tens and tens of thousand dollars of in prize money that, um, but Occasionally, we do have somebody who applies for the very first time and makes it all the way to like the final round. It just depends on the type of opportunity they have. Presumably, if you're if you're getting that far in your first round, you have a huge opportunity either for lots of revenue or lots of social impact or both. Um, but most of the time, people come back, you know, two or three times before you. I mean, we people like Peter are more common than the first example where you go through it once. You learn a lot, you grow, you pivot, you tweak, um, and then you come back um, maybe a second or a third time and then take home the big, the big prize. So um, yeah, we, and we hope that that's positive. We hope, you know, I know um, Peter is super real and like, it is a lot of work. So it's not a small thing to decide that you want to go through this process on top of running your company or on top of your day job or whatever else, whatever else you're up to. Um, but it's, we really think that it's worth it because um, we do have people come back so much. So we're, we're proud of that, that like if it was terrible, um, we wouldn't have so many returning participants every year. So um, I'm curious from your standpoint, Eddie, and whether you answer this specific to the, um, the accelerator you run or just like uses it as an opportunity to, to share more about other generator programs, how, how far along are the companies that you're looking for? I know you answered already that you are looking for companies that for the accelerator program, they're ready for VC investment because that's a part of what companies get or the expectation when, when folks accept the spot. But, but um, it, are there other things that you can share about like, should you have an existing product in market? Um, do you, uh, is it possible that somebody is still just going through an MVP or they're, they aren't selling to customers yet, but they, that you they still might be attractive to your your program great question and um so i think it goes back to what we mentioned is how how best can you use this time and for what stage in your company's life would that be the best time so what i mean is that because generator has many different initiatives to the earlier stage, right? Developing the MVP and then just kicked off MVP and then new product launch, et cetera. The reason why we like to have some sort of market validation at the point when they're in the accelerator really is to utilize the partnerships that Generator can offer during those three months, as well as those from ECMC, because it's going to be a lot of introductions. We're really going to focus on business growth and that's going to be a really big part of it. Uh, so my personal opinion is that the company should be in market or at least be able to enter into the market during the accelerator. We can help you by bringing in all these different mentors, right? We can help by also bringing in the different investors to get their perspectives, how to pivot, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that if you're not there yet, I mean, we're going to also have the accelerator next year and within those 12 months or whatever. There are a lot of other initiatives that you know Generator offers and Jessica, your team offers as well. So I just, I don't want this opportunity to not go to waste, but be underutilized compared to where your company might be next year. 
That's awesome. That's really helpful. Um, I also want to, I mean, someone sort of took the words out of my mouth, but I'm going to use um, in the chat, someone asked a question about ECMC. Um, and I'd love to use this opportunity to plug our, our the sponsor that we share in common that um, ECMC is the primary sort of lead partner for the on-ramp um, accelerator program that Eddie leads. And they're also um, our founding sponsor for our education and training division. So both between ECMC group and ECMC foundation um, without their leadership and upfront investment, we the education and training division within Minnesota Cup wouldn't exist. Um, so they are a huge um, partner and they're really interested in um, improving educational outcomes. Their, their work um, for their their corporate business focuses on um, sort of college level, sort of both readiness and graduation rates, and um, a lot of their their um, their focus areas is around post secondary education. But they definitely believe in and see the opportunity and um, the necessity to be investing across um, sort of age groups and different types of educational modalities to continue to increase that college readiness or just um, ensure that people have the types of opportunities that they that they should and um, just to continue to move our, our economy and our jobs forward. So um, we're really, really grateful to ECMC for their support. Um, and then another one of Minnesota Cups Education and Training Division lead sponsors is Edmentum, um, which is another fantastic Twin Cities based company. Um, and so we're, yeah, without them and without obviously without the volunteer judges, mentors, and then of course the financial support from these great organizations, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we're doing because um, the seed capital doesn't come from nowhere. Um, I think sometimes people also think like, oh, you're based within the University of Minnesota. The U has a ton of money and like, yes and no. Um, but also we, we fundraise every dollar that we give away um, and the fundraising that we go through each year um, also pays Jamie and my salaries. So. Um, it really is um, community and partnership driven that we're able to offer the resources that we do completely for free. So um, a big shout out and thank you to ECMC and in our case at Mentum for, um, for stepping up and continuing to fund, um, fund these opportunities for founders. Yep, at Mentum. Yes, I can put their, their names in the chat too. So oh, thank you. Yeah, th or thank you for that question because it's it was a plug I was gonna make anyway and you teed me up perfectly. Um, so I, I'm i curious, are there any other questions? I know, you know, we both have shared some links, um, hopefully giving you a, like a little bit of a good overview and framing for the opportunities, but we will follow up with a like an email that um, to everybody that registered that both has a recording to this conversation and has the links that we've shared. So you don't have to be like racing back up the chat to copy and paste things out of there. Um, nobody needs that stress in their life. <laughs> so um, while we have just a couple minutes left together, does anybody else have a question we can answer? I've got a quick question. Awesome. Um, so how do I protect intellectual property? Because I have, uh, I'm in the uh, proof of concept stage of developing a hardware, software, cloud-based product. And, uh, and I'm not gonna be filing any IP for probably the third or fourth quarter of this year. That's an awesome question. Um, so I will take a stab at it first when it comes to the Minnesota Cup process but I'll let you answer it too, Eddie, from the um, generator perspective, because it might be different sort of how we approach it. Um, we give folks who have um, a path towards IP or a trademark, but maybe don't have those things yet to um, use their best judgment when it comes to how many specifics or how much really like trade secret information you choose to put into your Minnesota Cup application. Um, we have a very, um, thoughtful and committed um, group of judges who are truly there to be helpful and they're not there like they're not in the business of taking other people's ideas or running with it it's mostly people who are um, 
kind of successful in their own right already, or they've like been there, done that, and aren't looking to build <laughs> build new startups or sort of like take people's ideas. But um, it is very fair that even when it comes to getting IP protection or trademarks in the future, um, it's important that you have up until that point limited who you've told or shared, like how publicly you shared stuff. So um, we we still encourage you to apply. We don't think that Minnesota Cup um, specifically is going to expose you or like create risk, but you may just choose to allude to um, like patent pending or, you know, trademarked or trade secret sort of processes and information without actually saying very much of the specifics about what those are. Um, our judges will, for the, <laughs> for the most part, take your word for it. They're not going to expect receipts or like diagrams or patent numbers um, to believe that you know what you say you know and like are, are doing something innovative. Um, but maybe then in subsequent rounds, as you, as you um, progress through the competition, you might want to just have some more conversations or get more detailed advice about like, if you really want to win the division, or if you, if you do need to give a little bit more of that secret sauce for someone to understand how big your opportunity is, then we kind of take that stage by stage and and it's always your at your discretion because we want you to have the best opportunity possible and we want you to preserve the value of your idea so um everybody is in such a different position and in such a space that we don't we're not very prescriptive about what we recommend but we um it's a great question so we are getting close to the top of the hour so does anybody else have any questions I asked a question in the chat, but I'll ask it here too. Um, for the financial projections, um, how much detail are you looking for? So the for the Minnesota Cup, the financial component is optional. So you, you have essentially one spot in the application where you can upload a file type. It can be a spreadsheet, it could be a PDF. Um, and so while it's optional, I would say it's really highly recommended to try to think through something um, even if you're really, really early on in your thinking, the judges want to see that you're thinking about, um, you know, your plan for revenue, risk mitigation, things like that, um, expenses, et cetera. So um, even getting some of that down in a format is really helpful for them because we all know early on, like everything you predict is probably wrong. So, you know, no one's going to hold you to what you're putting into a spreadsheet. Um, and so we don't provide any sort of template for that. We you know, we've done, um, I don't know if we're going to load the Lurie, I think we are loading the Lurie finance are, yep. walkthrough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if you go back to the schedule page on our website, you will see a session from a couple of weeks ago where they walk through some early ways to think about financial projections. So that might just be helpful no matter what you do. Yeah, well, I have, I have pretty deep, I'm, we are generating revenue and we've been around a few years. So I have a pretty detailed right. prediction for the next year. I just don't have much I mean, yeah. the three to five years, it started, it's a different kind of way of thinking about things. That's Yeah, yeah. And I would say no one's yeah. going to hold you to that. They want, mm -hmm. you know, any sort of projection is really not telling a story about money as much as how you're thinking about your plan and, and how you're going, what you're going to do for the next three to five years, more so than the actual numbers. So, okay. yeah. Um, and then question about the business plan. Yeah, so you do question. not need a business plan in order to apply to the Minnesota Cup. That will be a component you submit if you move on into the next round. So you'll have um, quite a few months in that time period to work on that and we'll provide more information um, during that time. Yeah, thank you all so much for being here and have a great rest of your Tuesday.